you sent me a link to this quote from uh, Vitalik. Is that how you say his name? The guy yeah, from Vitalik. Ethereum. Yeah, Vitalik. Yeah, that's about right. And, and he he outlined his like, like this like crazy vision for how Ethereum could work. Uh huh. Yeah, it would it and would take the idea of decentralized currency and it applies it to an entire economy, not just of people, but like a- autonomous organizations and machines who like basically make payments in vir- in virtual currency automatically without any humans trying to um or humans having to control right them. like and like you know bitcoin bitcoin's a huge step in that because it, and you know in my personal opinion um you know the ether that serves is like the fuel it's it's technically a cryptocurrency um but really I don't. I don't think if it if Ethereum ever gets off the ground and goes anywhere, I don't think the Ether will actually be like a currency. It'll just be like um, a way to sign contracts and confirm transactions. Um, and and Ethereum would operate on top of Bitcoin, with Bitcoin serving as you know the actual you know valuable currency. Mm-hmm. It's kind of uh, similar to what uh Gavin Andreessen had to say about his you know, uh, he called it bitherium and there's an article about it on Coinbrief if anybody wants to look it up um but it's you know it's a really interesting way to envision a future society where everything is decentralized and um autonomous uh like Vitalik was talking about you you wake up and you check your phone and you know $17 is automatically removed uh from your from your account to pay to pay rent uh and if you if you don't pay rent like the lock signature on your doorknob automatically changes so like so so your key doesn't like it doesn't like confirm the transaction to unlock the door or whatever and it's like a vision of a completely decentralized trustless society it's pretty cool yeah and like if if your landlord like isn't keeping up the the his his end of the of the bargain or whatever like, if there's an agreement between the landlord and the government, the government can come in and just, just take the property automatically. No human has to flip the switch or anything. It just does it automatically because the, la- the landlord wasn't paying the bills. And then you're, if you're still living there and you're still paying rent, your payments would just automatically go towards the government or, who, you know, Loan Shark or whatever. I don't know. Like, whoever owns that, that property at that time now. You still live there, and your payments just go to them automatically. You don't have to go through any legal mess of you know paperwork and hiring a lawyer, and all this all this nonsense, because all that stuff can potentially be executed now on the blockchain instead. Yeah, but see now this I want to talk about this. This is where I kind of run into a problem with these uh, with these DAX, uh, decentralized autonomous corporations. Or it's, uh, in some instances, they're commu- called communities instead of corpor- corporations or okay. organizations. Okay. So it's a, it's a really great way to uh, maintain society. It's a really great way to replace to have a peaceful alternative to government because all go- because really all government is is it's a social contract that everybody agrees to, and so something inherently wrong with the government. Just what has historically always happened is that the social contract has become unimportant, unimportant and uh, you know this government is this huge monopoly that has no competition. But these um, these DACs, you know, it, it could change all that. Yeah. Because uh, it, it would make it would make the contract completely trustless. Um, you you know you I I wouldn't have to trust the government to uphold its end of the bargain, and the government wouldn't have to trust me to pay my taxes every year. You know, like, like if I if I don't pay my taxes if I don't pay my uh, taxes to the water company or the portion of government that controls the water, I don't get water. Mm-hmm. If I send my money to the water company and they don't turn my and they turn or they don't give me water, uh, well then the transaction isn't completed. Then I, and I get my money back from escrow. It's completely trustless. But on the business side of things, it's like operating an actual company. I don't think it would make the company like the companies. It wouldn't actually make them decentralized and autonomous. I think it would just make them. Uh, I think it would just streamline the corporation structure. Oh, yeah. Well, that's definitely going to happen too. That's a, that's a huge component of it. It's gonna. 
you know, re reduce the need for human beings to do some of these tasks, and that'll save costs. If you can tell Ethereum to handle your, um, your, your payments and expenses and handling property contracts and stuff like that, then there's no need to hire a lawyer for your business if you don't, if you don't want one, if you want to save the money there. No need to hire compliance officers and other kind of redundant jobs that'll get obsolete if Ethereum and other platforms like it, you know, get mature enough. And then the the, the person who, who controls that particular organization or corporation or whatever would see a greater profit because they're saving more money than if if they had to pay all these random people before. So, yeah, I mean, that's, that's completely true. There's going to be yeah. greater profit for them. Well, I, th I think what a lot of people have in mind, though, uh, with these decentralized autonomous corporations is that, you know, there would, there would, like the entire corporation would be just decentralized. There would no longer be a hierarchical structure. And that's where I would have to disagree with it. Because I was reading a little bit into these DACs and how they would operate, um, like in, because I think of everything, you know, in terms of economics. So I was like, well, like, how, how does this work economically? And, um, what I read on some like wiki page about DAX is that um, the actual corporation would act like a normal corporation, um, but it wouldn't be controlled by anybody who would be acting as an entrepreneur. The entrepreneurs would actually be the developers, the people who coded the corporation. Mm. And so, and so what it would do is it would change it to where the, the entrepreneurs would have a vision, and they would be able to take advantage of it and build something that contributed to society. But they wouldn't become like filthy rich and so powerful that they can, you know, oppress everybody for lack of a better word. It's not what actually happens on a free market. But let's just assume it does, and the DAX would solve that. But you know, that wouldn't really happen because there would still be majorities. Because um, you know, there would still be shareholders. It would just be you would just buy shares on a decentralized platform, and so you know, it's totally conceivable that some people could have a majority and then they would be in charge like they would decide where the business went mm -hmm. so you know like in my opinion there's just no way to actually eliminate like the entrepreneurial aspect of a corporation like there's like there is always going to be somebody who owns a majority and who and that person will always decide what to do right. with that company's capital yeah, and I think that, you know, these decentralized autonomous organizations, it'll enable people to kind of choose between what kind of system they want to have for their business or organization or whatever. Like the person who develop it, develops it, they can choose to keep a tighter, you know, tighter control over it if they want to, or they can just set it out there and, and have it, you know, be on its own, kind of the same way Satoshi just set out Bitcoin and just everyone right. just does it. Well, I think I think that's the idea, right? Like, every, like this is part of the open source movement. You know, everything is, you know, free information. And it's all decentralized. Yeah, but I, I mean, I'm I'm not totally versed on how Ethereum would work, uh, building entire decentralized autonomous autonomous organizations, but I'm sure that like the entrepreneur who initially designs it or the developer or whatever who makes this uh, DAC, if you want to call it that, um, they can code it in there somehow where they, you know, they funnel themselves a little bit of the of the profits that this that this corporate corporation develops on its own and it funnels it back to them in the in the form of, you know, dividends or, or profits or whatever. So like it's not like these entrepreneurs slash developers won't have any way to like collect money from their project. They can just code that in there in there from themselves. And um, actually, a great example of that specifically is um, this new design for a dark market that came out a couple weeks ago. Um, that initially I thought it was Open Bazaar, but it's an entirely new project that someone designed um, to act like Open Bazaar. But basically, whoever designed it. Um, they made it so that every transaction, you know, funnels a little, a little bit back to the developer. And like some people on Reddit were like, oh, wow, this guy's going to make a bunch of money off of this. He's trying, he's trying to be the new, the new DPR, the, the new centralized, uh, market for, for, for illicit goods. 
But, you know, developers have the freedom to do that, and they're, they're always going to have the freedom to do that. If they make something, they can choose to funnel some money back to them. But the, the difference is now that everyone knows that they're trying to do that. Everyone can see that they're doing that. Um, no one really wants to use closed source software anymore. Um, so if you put out something open source out there that funnels you profit back, back to you, um, people are going to know about it, and people can still choose to use it if they want to. But uh, yeah, it's you can still do that if if you want to in, in the new economy. Right. Well, my my point is that uh, this uh, is totally capable of creating um, an entirely decentralized society where a free market can arise and operate without like you know any kind of hindrance at all. But in terms of the single firms, like, you know, for example, like a Walmart or, you know, some huge corporation, like the actual businesses themselves, I don't think could ever be, um, like decentralized entirely to where, to where everybody has an equal share of the company. Um, cause as, you know, as long as you can oh, buy yeah. a share, yeah. as long as you can buy a share, there's going to be majority shareholders and those are going to be the people who... Um, make the final decision and where the company is going. So while you know, if, while and you know, this is just my opinion, and I'm like far from an Ethereum expert. I don't think anybody's really an expert on Ethereum at this point. Yeah, except Vitalik. But um, but just from what I can see, um, just from like an economic viewpoint, like it's totally it's totally conceivable to have a decentralized society. Um, but I don't think I don't think that individual firms. Uh, would ever be able to profitably uh, operate without without an entrepreneur at the head making the final decision on everything.